So wages have been going down for if you have a job. And then you've got this really a collapse of work in the non-college degree black population over the last 40, 45 years. So I'd kind of just leave you with that is that is that among all the other problems you want to talk about, I just don't know how how you get anywhere uh, with that kind of with with th that kind of trajectory. Yes, and I mean that is just powerful. And and I want to camel back. You wanted to say something, Josh? Yeah, I just wanted to say. To me, it sounds like with you know with the us with our employment not being as necessary, or I don't I don't want to. I guess we could say replace essentially, but. Um, with, with then it seems like the the need for investment to make to make sure that we had the proper education levels it there wasn't a a, a necessity to put enough emphasis to make sure that, that that we were producing the uh the amount of graduates if we didn't so what they can just That's put a, some that somebody is, else in there that is a uh i i don't think i i don't think i included that point in the book but that is a great point uh uh, you know, as I said in the book, as the time has gone on in the last 40 years, uh, the American economy does not need black labor. It, it, that, that is, it doesn't need that, that, that part of the black labor is not employed. They don't need it. I mean, because they get it from somewhere else. And if yeah. you don't need it, are you going to make sure that public, uh, public education uh, in, the, in the predominantly black communities is is producing the people you know the bit part of the thing in 87 was is the business community needed to figure out ways to improve the education uh in their communities so that so that the the under black underclass uh would be prepared for the job to take the jobs of their you know so they would be concerned but you're exactly right i i think i think this lack of 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 uh need for black labor uh the the, the non-employed black labor is probably uh, a big reason for the for the under uh, the, you know the underachievement of public education right now. It's like and, it, and in my opinion, the mass immigration has it, it and doing exactly what you just talked about. I mean, just just how I process it, it seems like it fed right into mass the the system of mass incarceration, where you have a whole. And I think you touched on that in the book as well, where well, you're, yeah, you're. Well, your well, your 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 buddy uh, Glenn Lowry, uh, 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 <laughs> but I think you'd have to agree with him, agree with him on this. He said he said if uh, all this black labor was we had a tight labor market, uh, the businesses might themselves might insist that there was a lot less incarceration and and <laughs> for a lot shorter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Hey, you can't be locking them up in jail; they can't work. They can't they gotta, yeah, get them out here working. So yeah, uh and 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 you know, we know that that also had an element of uh crack hitting the communities and just eviscerating. So it's almost and you made a real man, you just said a real powerful point. If you don't need the labor, you, uh, so now you're saying you might as well, you know, if you go to jail, it doesn't matter. If you don't get educated, it doesn't matter, we got your labor replaced. Man, you're educated enough to re to to take to to receive your uh, safety net, net stuff, you know, mm. and mm. so that's enough. Uh, yeah. Indeed, indeed. So let me close out with <clears throat> a few excerpts from the book. All right, <laughs> right, and th this is coming from page page. Uh, you know what? I'm going to start from page 16 to 17. And because it, it speaks to what you and Josh were just speaking on, right? And I'm going to start with the last sentence of a paragraph. <laughs> it says, but no group has been hit harder than black men. The change in households structure did not occur in isolation from the major economic changes of the last half century. And no change in that period may have been greater than the quadrupling of immigration and its loosening of labor markets. By depressing job opportunities and wages for young black men without college degrees, sustained immigration surges have made it less likely that young men can even imagine having the income to marry and take responsibility 
for a family. And one day I really want to just flesh that, just that last sentence out. It's one of these days. Maybe when you come back on, we, we, we could get a little deeper into that. It continues. Federal data in 2018 shows that 42% of all black men aged 25 through 34 earned less than $25,100 needed to provide for a family of four above the poverty line. How could family formation occur in those kinds of conditions, asked Roger Wilkins when presented with similar bleak statistics in the 1990s. Wilkins, the highest ranking African American in the Johnson administration, complained to National Public Radio, quote, we hear people talking about black families falling apart, but we don't hear anything, excuse me, but we don't hear anybody talking about putting black men to work, giving black families the economic wherewithal to stay together and raise their children. And I, I thought, you know, as I listened to the closing portion of the conversation, I was just kind of wondering where I was going to end with from the book. And y'all kind of tossed me a softball with that one, right? Because when you hear particularly right-wing media, and even Barack Obama has, has echoed this thing about the, you know, where's the black fathers in the home? And, you know, without getting into this immigration issue, as, as you have pointed out in this book, without getting into the factors that Dr. Darity has pointed out in uh, um, From Here to Equality, he and, he and uh, his co-author, A. Kirsten Mullins, without getting into Mercer Baradaron's The Color of Money that deals with Black banking and Black wealth, without getting into Rothstein's book, The Color of Law, that deals with legal government-sanctioned segregation in this country. If you don't have all of this information, and we have that here, we have all of it. We have all of the we have all of the the cogs in the machine when it comes to research and information, which is why we know exactly what's needed and what we need to do. Then you are either speaking from a place of ignorance or you're just continuing to throw red meat to your ravenous base. That's and right. at some point, we have to we have to start having serious, serious discussions because. Many thought leaders that are in media, they can actually use their voices to sway their constituency. And I think that, that your book, Roy, really is the, a first step forward in us having that conversation with people that I guess we could say are in what Martin Luther King Jr. called the other America. 